In this class, we are going to learn how to create an editable table in Oracle Visual Builder application. Editable table in the sense, suppose if you have a page created in Visual Builder application in which you are representing the data in a tabular fashion and suppose if a user wants to change the details over here for any of the employee like the first name, salary, so and so forth things, they can straight away double click over here and they can mention the new salary like I'm changing from 24,600 to 24,900. As soon as you change, it will be reflected over here in the table. For this demonstration, what I'm doing is I'm considering the business object and populating the table with the help of endpoints. So before I go ahead, let me just refresh and show you the previous data available in the business object. So I have modified over here the details for Steven. I have increased the salary from 24,600 and now I have made it 24,900. So it will be visible only over here in the table unless I click on save. Let me click on save. As soon as I click on save, what it will do is it will update in the backend. In our case, it's a business object. If you see over here, it has updated from 24,600 to 24,900. So we will learn step by step how to achieve the same, like how to create table that is in editable mode in Visual Builder application now. Step one in building an editable table is identifying the source. In our case, the source is the business object over here. I'm considering this employee business object and I'm having the pre-filled data over here. In your case, the data could be coming from a database or some other application. So you can consider accordingly the source for your application. So let me consider the employee business object for this use case as I demonstrated the application at the beginning of this class. Now, first thing is we have to create the type as we are going to make use of the ADP which will be populated when the page loads and we are going to make use of the same ADP and populate the table. So for the demonstration, we are considering the editable table with the help of ADP that is array data provider kind of variable. So let me first create a type that is based on some endpoint that is the employee business object endpoint I'm considering over here. Expand the employee. Here we have to select the get employee. Let me just name this as get employee type. I will select everything from the response and click on finish. I have created the employee type. Next, I have to create a variable. Click on this plus variable. Let me just name this as employee ADP variable. From the type, I will be selecting the array data provider. Click on create. From here, I will tell assign the data later as I'm making use of the action chain in order to populate the data into this ADP that is with the help of endpoint. Here, I will select this ADP will be based on this get employee type which we created just now. And the key attribute over here will be the employee ID, which is nothing but an ID in our case. So we have completed this part, that is we have created a type and the ADP. Next, what we will do is we will be dropping a table component into our page. Let me just drag and drop it over here. So here what I'm trying to do is I will populate this with the help of ADP. Uh, we have created the type but we have not yet created the action chain which will be calling the endpoint of employee business object and populate the details into the ADP. In order to populate the data, we have to create a VB enter event. Click on this event listener. Click on this and select the VB enter. Click on next. Let me just create a action chain with the name VB enter action chain. You can name as per your project convention. Click on finish. Get into the action chain. What I will do is I will make a call to the endpoint that is nothing but our business object employee get all employee click on select we will assign the response from this call to our ADP we will select this ADP and we are going to assign the response from the previous rest call that will be under body under item this is an array we are mapping array to ADP then we will be resetting it to empty that is we are making the variable empty then we are assigning the response to the variable let me just go back to this page designer here. Let me just associate the ADP to the table. Let me just drag and drop it over here. So we have mapped the ADP variable to this table component, but we have not selected the column. So it is coming as empty. Now let me just select the ID. Then I will select the first name. I will select the higher date. It's over here. Next, I will select the salary. It's over here. Then. For the demonstration purpose, I will be selecting only this part. Click on this refresh. It didn't still load the data over here in the table. Let me just go back and check the action chain. That is a JavaScript action chain. Let me just click this assign variable. Here, what I have done is I have assigned the items to the ADP. Instead, what I should have done is I should have assigned this to the data. Because an array, we should assign to the array. Let me just map the response again. That is the items. 
click on save i'm selecting this reset to empty that is i'm making the variable empty before assignment and then i'm assigning the fresh values go back to the page designer i click on refresh yeah this time we could see that the details are getting populated into the table if you see it is getting scroll and scroll over here we will restrict the height so for that we will make use of the style component over here attribute so here i'm restricting the height to 50 vh that's fine yeah now we are getting a small table where we can scroll so this was the step two that is we have created the ui we have drag and drop the table component now suppose if you make it live and double click over here nothing is happening so we will learn how to make any row editable now In order to make this table editable, what we have to do is we have to go back to this all attributes over here and we have to search edit and the mode we have to select as row edit. That's fine. Now if you just go back to the live mode and click, it is making this available in the edit mode. As of now, every cell in this table component is read only. So we are not seeing any option to change the value. So what we have to do is we have to change the component over here in order to accept the value from the user. We have to just search for the input component and whatever suits the data we have to drag and drop now input date it suits this higher date next comes the input salary that is the number kind of thing we will just drag and drop the number component over here and the first name is nothing but it is the string type of data for that we are selecting input input text drag and drop it over here once done what we will do is we will just remove the label components from here so that we will get the data only over here so if you remove this label component, we will only see the data. We have to do that thing first. Now select this number part and we will sell, remove this number. We will switch back to the live mode and double click over here. Yet this is not available for edit. What we have to do is we have to make this read only. We have to uncheck that. That is go to the general and we will uncheck this read only salary. Also we will go over here and uncheck this. That is read only. It's already unchecked over here. Here if you see it is allowing us to change the value as soon as I tap out it's reflecting back the same value that is the current date. So we'll look one by one how to change those things as of now we will be able to edit the details. The next step in creating the editable table is we have to look up for some documentation by looking up this object cookbook. So from the table of content we have to go for collections table under that we have to go to editable from the editable we will get the details. Now here if you see Oracle has created a dummy application wherein there is a feature to select the date so and so forth things within the table component. Now if you scroll down and have a look at this demo.html we have to look for this OJ table component in this HTML. So here in the template they are having couple of modes. When we are just weaving the application so it is showing the current data which is pulled from the ADP variable. So when we are editing what we have to do is we have to store this value in some variable and then we have to modify the data which is present in that particular temporary variable and then if the user clicks on save then only we have to store the details from the temporary variable back to the business object so this is the use case now in order to add the mode what we have to do is we have to go back to this code view from here and copy this piece of code that is from any of the templates you can copy i'm just copying this from here that is one is a navigation mode another is a edit mode and copy it over here let me just end this tag then let me just format this now what it is saying is when the mode is navigation we are showing the current data so let me just copy and paste it over here wherever there is a cell then we have modified the details that is we are showing the current data over here and when the mode is edit then we are showing this current data in the edit mode so as we are accepting the value that is editing the value we have to make use of this flower bracket now same way we have to copy and paste the details for other temporary variables template parameters over here that is for the date component let me just end this tag similarly for the salary we just format this document we have to make this as editable by replacing these square brackets with the flower brackets that is opening and the close Now let me go back to this live mode again and we will see whether we have broken anything in this page. The page is loading absolutely fine. Let me just double click over here and I will be allowed to modify the details. Now as soon as I tab out, the date whatever selected will be gone off, it won't be saved. Now similarly for the name change as well, if I am selecting this Steven as Steven1 and if I am incrementing the salary to 
something else it is going off from here as soon as i change the details so now we have to see how to retain the value once the user modifies and taps out suppose i am writing st11 and just tapping out so this should be retained as soon as i tap out in order to retain the data when the user changes the value for any of the rows what we have to do is we have to make use of the events from the new add event we have to select own oj before row edit select this so it will create an action chain for you so what you have to do is we have to drag the assign variable over here and we have to select the variable as of now we have not created a variable let's now create a variable let me just go to the variable and create a temporary variable in order to hold the current data that is the current table row data let me name this as like this or employee data here the type i am selecting as get employee type click on create let's go back to the action chain here what we have to do is we have to select this current table row data from the value we have to select this row data click on save now there is a bug in the javascript based action chain if you see over here our row data is being assigned to this constant type of variable so in order to overcome this issue what we have to do is we have to replace this with the flower brackets now if you see our page data is been mapped to the variable now we have to select this reset to empty done let me just go back so we have created the event that is before the table row goes into the edit mode we, what we are doing is we are mapping the details whatever was present in that particular selected row to a temporary variable now when this is in the edit mode what we have to do is we have to show the details whatever is present in that particular current table currently what we are doing is when the mode is navigation then we are showing the current data current data means whatever was fetched from the endpoint and it was stored in the adp but when the mode goes to the edit mode what we have to do is we have to show the data what is present in the temporary variable because whatever we modify goes into the temporary variable only now here what we have to do is we have to go back to this data and we have to select over here the first name because this is with respect to the first name we are changing so let me just select this and go over to the data and select this and from the current table row data we have to select the first name let me just remove this and put the first name over here click on save done let me just go back to this live mode and if i select this what it is doing is it is showing the details whatever is present in the temporary variable that is in the first name similar changes we have to do for all the things like for the higher data now so we can make use of the structure over here we have to select whatever is under this navigation mode that is edit so if you just select this you will see the edit details so you can make use of the structure no need to go to code so if you are not comfortable working with the code now here go to data from here we have to remove this when the mode is edit we have to select the higher date that is from the temporary variable drag and drop it over here click on save just verify it should be in the flower brackets opening and the close similar changes you have to do for the salary go over to the salary remove the existing data get the salary details from this temporary variable drag and drop it over here click on save so let me just verify whenever we are selecting this it should show the details and if i modify and tab out it is going off so in order to retain the data whatever user has entered so what you have to do is you have to select this table go to the events now we have to create an event that is og before row edit ends we have created one event that is before the row edit now we have to create an event that is before the row edit ends so the first thing what we have to drop over here is the fire component once the user is done with changing the details for that particular row it should be updated in the adp variable with the help of adp only we are showing the details in the table so here what we have to select in the event target is we have to select the adp variable just drag and drop it over here and from the operation we have to select this mutate and in mutate we have to tell update so in update what we will do is here we are selecting this current table data so just make sure it is in the brackets that is in the flower brackets then coming to the indexes here we will put row index i will put here the flower bracket click on save coming to the keys we will put the key that is row key anything is fine row index or the row key should be enough any either of the one i will be putting both the things let me just go back to this page and switch over to the live mode here if i click this in edit mode and if i change the salary and tab out now the data is retained it is not going off so 
suppose if I double click this and change the date to 18 from 17 and just tap out, it will be retained over here. Similarly, for the first name, if I just change it to Stephen and make it as Stephen King, just tap out, it is retained over here. So in this section, we have seen how to retain the data, whatever user has entered in the editable row in the table. We have made the modification in the table that is in the ADP level. Now we have to reflect those changes in the business object. As of now, it is not reflected in the business object. Now, if I show you the business object data for the Steven, the first name we had made, the, made it as a Steven King and the salary we had modified it to something else other than 2400. So we will see how to save the changes with the help of a button. In order to save the changes back to the business object after user has modified the details in a table row, what we have to do is we can make use of a button over here with the help of which when the user clicks on the button, it will store the details to the business object, drop it over here. I will name this button as save. You can name as per your naming convention followed in the project and create this event that is OJ action. Here we are not concentrating on building a logic that is to check whether any row has been edited or not. In this, we are considering that all the rows must be updated back to the business object. Now for this use case, I'm just dropping over here the for loop. Let me just search for the for loop and drop it over here. I'm trying to loop over the ADP variable data that is over here and the data. Let me just remove these square brackets, click on save. I want the mode to be serial. If you want, you can select the parallel in order to parallelly process the things. Next, I will make use of this call rest. What I am doing is I am selecting the patch operation from the employee business object endpoint which is supporting updation. Select this and in the employee ID what I will do is I will select this ADP. I will map the ID from here and map it over here. Next we are considering the index from the action chain. I will type it over here the index. If you want you can just map this index over here and you will get this index. Click on save. So whenever the user clicks on that particular row that only particular row will be selected and it will be updated based on this ID. We have completed mapping this employee ID in the input parameter. Next, we have to map the body. For body, what we have to do is we have to expand this ADP. We have to map these items to the body. Instead of zero, what we will tell is an index. Whatever user has entered or modified in that particular index, it will be looped over here with the help of for each loop and it will be mapped. So we can verify the details with the help of code view as well. Now let me just go back to the space designer and click on this live mode. Now here as of now, whenever the page loads, we are making use of the VB enter page event and it will fetch the details from the business object and populate this table. So this table will reflect the data whatever is available over here in the business object that is employee based business object. So we are going to demonstrate that is by modifying the details for Steven. We are increasing his salary so that he will become happy. So we'll go to this page and we are selecting this Steven's record and we will increase his salary to 28k. And we are making Steven as Steven1. Just about our details will be saved. As of now in the ADP, you can just go over to the business object and verify it won't be changed. Now, as soon as the user clicks on save, it will be reflected. Now I have clicked on save button. Let me just go back to this employee and refresh the data. Here if you see the details will be changed. That is salary of Steven has been increased to 28k. Now the name of the Steven has become Steven1 and we have not modified the higher date. Higher date is same. So like this, we can create the table in editable mode in Visual Builder application. So this will be useful in your applications when you are trying to build a page where the user will have a feasibility to change the details right from the tabular data.